In this video, I'll show you two simple things that you can do to help you determine whether your color is cool or warm. And you won't need a color wheel. I'm often asked, how do you determine what temperature a color is? How do you know whether a color is cool or warm? Like a lot of other people, I don't find it easy to look at a color wheel and try to work out what temperature a color is. It's confusing and I think a lot of it is guesswork especially when you first start painting. So without using the color wheel, I'll show you two things I do to work out what temperature a color is. The first thing I do is I go online to the paint manufacturer's website. Let's have a look at Windsor & Newton's website. Okay, here's their website. The first thing I do is find their professional watercolor color chart. I click on that and that displays all of their colors in their color range. The yellows are first, followed by the oranges and the reds. And then we start to hit the violets, the blues, the greens, and then the earthy colours, and then the greys and blacks. Now, interestingly, they have all of their colours grouped according to their temperature bias, and that's so helpful to us as artists. All these yellows along the top are cool yellows. And as we work our way down the yellows and head towards the oranges and reds, the yellows start to become warm. So these cadmium colours here are warm. And all of these yellows underneath as they head toward orange are also warm. The oranges are warm. And then we hit the reds. Now because the reds here are listed closest to the yellows and the oranges, they're going to be the warm reds. So these two reds at the start are warm and these reds all the way along this line here are warm all the way until we get to quinacridone red and then they start to change. They're moving closer to the blues that are listed and Windsor Red Deep is the start of the cool reds. So then when you head down to the violets because the violets here are closest to the red, these are the warm violets. And then we start to hit the blues. Now because the blues are closest to the red, these blues here are the warm blues. But as you work your way down through the blues, they become cooler because they're starting to hit the greens. So Antwerp blue is the start of the cool blues. And the same thing happens with the greens. The greens that are listed that are closer to the blues are the cool greens. As the greens start to move down towards the earthy colours, they become warmer. The way they list their colours is really helpful and the other paint manufacturers do the same thing. I went on Daniel Smith's and Schmincke's website and they are both listed the same way. Okay, so here's the Daniel Smith colour chart online. Up the top, we've got our cool yellows and then they start to move into warm yellows and we've got the oranges and then we move into the warm reds. They're the warm reds because they're near the yellow and then they become cooler as they move closer to the blues. When the violets start, they're warm because they're near the reds but then they become cooler because they're near the blues. And then the blues start off warm because they're near the reds. And then as they move their way closer to the greens, they become cooler. So it's set up the same way as the Windsor and Newton color chart. So there's one way that will help you determine whether a specific color that you have in your kit is warm or cool. It'll point you in the right direction. The colors you might find difficult to classify are those where they transition from one temperature to the other. So you might wonder at what point on the chart does the colour become a warm colour and vice versa. So here's the next step. If looking at those online charts doesn't answer your question, a second way you can determine if a colour is warm or cool is to do some mixing with the paints that you have. The temperature of the colours you use affect the colours you mix. For example, green is a cool colour. When you mix a cool yellow and a cool blue, you will mix a vibrant green. 
I'm back on the Winsor and Newton colour chart online. And if I take some Winsor Lemon, which I know is a cool colour because it's right up here with the cool yellows, and I'll mix that with a cool blue. So let's scroll down to the blues. Now they start with the warm blues, but then they get cooler. So if I choose a cool blue, let's say Windsor Blue Green Shade. Now I know that's cool because it's at the end of the blues. And I'll mix those two colours together. So this is Windsor Lemon. And this is Windsor Blue Green Shade. Mix them together and that gives me a really vibrant, almost artificial looking green. Let's have a look at it. So that's a really bright, vibrant green. Okay, so that's two cool colours. If you mix with a blue or a yellow that is warm, then the green you mix will not be as vibrant. It will be more muted. Okay, back to the colour chart. So instead of a cool yellow, I'll choose a yellow that's closer to the oranges. I'll choose Indian yellow and I'll mix that with my blue. So here's the Indian yellow. And here's the blue again. It's the Windsor blue green shade. I mix them together. You can see straight away that that's more of a natural looking green. It's much more earthy looking. We'll try it out on the paper. Okay, so you can see that it's nowhere near as bright and funky as that green that I mixed with the two cool colours. So we know that the temperature of a colour has an impact on the mix. Let's say you have a blue and you've got no idea whether it's cool or warm. You go online to look at the paint manufacturer's colour chart and your blue sits somewhere in the middle and it's not clear to you whether it's cool or warm. If you can take one of your yellows that you know without a doubt is cool because it sits at the beginning of the online colour chart and you mix it with the blue that you're not sure about, if your blue is cool, you'll mix a beautiful vibrant green. But if it's a warm blue, the green you mix won't be really vibrant it will be a more natural looking green. Let me show you what I mean. Okay, back to the online chart. I'm going to use Windsor Lemon because I know it's cool. It's sitting right at the top of the chart. And let's say I've got a blue in my kit and I've got no idea what temperature it is. So I go online, I have a look, and it's sitting right in the middle of the blues. So let's say the color I had was Antwerp blue. This one just here. It's right in the middle of the blues and I'm not sure is it cool, is it warm. So then I get my Windsor lemon because I know it's cool. This one here is Antwerp blue so I'll use that. I'm not sure at this stage whether it's cool or warm but when I mix it with my cool yellow I get a really vibrant green. So now I know that Antwerp blue must be a cool blue. You can also reverse that. If you've got a blue, you know without a doubt that it's cool and you take one of your yellows that you're not sure about, mix them together. If the green you mix is really vibrant, almost artificial looking, then that yellow would be cool as well. But if it's a more muted green, and that yellow is warm. You can do the same thing with your reds if you aren't sure what temperature they are. This time mix it with yellow to make an orange colour. Orange is a warm colour so you'll need two warm colours to mix a vibrant orange. If you mix a cool yellow with a warm red the colour won't be as vibrant as it is if you mix a warm yellow with a warm red. Okay, back to the colour chart. I'll use Indian yellow because I know it's a warm yellow. It's at the end of the yellows. And then if I have a look at the reds, so let's say roughly halfway through the reds, 
is quinacridone red. So I'll get out some of that colour and let's decide whether it's cool or warm. I'll get my Indian yellow. And this is quinacridone red. You only need a really small amount of the red. I'll mix them together. So I've got my warm yellow. I'm deciding whether or not this red is warm or not. Try it on my paper and that looks quite vibrant to me. So I would say quinacridone red is a warm red. Now let's say I'm not sure about permanent rose. I don't know whether it's a cool red or a warm red. So I get some of my warm yellow, which is Indian yellow, and I'll mix a tiny bit of permanent rose into that. And I'll see what I get. Now again, that looks a bit more earthy to me to that previous orange that I mixed. So let's have a look. Okay, so you can see that's nowhere near as vibrant or yellow looking as the previous orange. So I would say that permanent rose would be a cool red. So there's two ways you can try to work out what temperature your colours are. I encourage you to use those online colour charts because they're very useful. And also make colour charts of your own colours. Mix the colours together and try to determine what temperature they are because knowing the temperature is important. You might find that all your reds are warm and you might need to buy a couple of cool reds. When you're just starting out, buy yourself a warm and cool red, a warm and cool blue and a warm and cool yellow and you'll be able to mix a heap of different colours with them. I hope this was useful to you. Please join us on Patreon if you'd like to learn to paint in watercolour or if you'd like to upgrade your current skills. Don't forget to give the video a like and subscribe to the channel and I'll see you next week. Good? No, it's worse. What is wrong with my hair? Oh, is it alright? Yeah, it's worse. It's frizzy at the top. Oh! Nice. What do I do? Nice. Oh, stray frizziness at the top. Is it right? Just leave it. Come on, let's go. Is it good? Sure. It'll have to do a... doesn't matter, I'm old. Left hand, left side, button. I'm old. Nobody watches me anyway. What, what do I do? Hold it on my knee. Let's practice. You went like this, you went... And you won't need a colour wheel. Are you alright with it bouncing in the bottom of the frame at the start? I'm often asked, how do you determine what temperature a colour is? I'm going to cough. <coughs> schminker, schminker, schminker. It's schminker, isn't it? First I tell them, then I show them. <coughs> I got a tickle. Go back to just before you Stop. cough. That's the last Stop. bit of orange. Stop. Please join us on Patreon if you'd like to learn to paint in watercolour or or or. or. <laughs>